Do not be afraid. Go and tell everyone to go to Galilee. There you will see me. These are the instructions of the risen Lord to the faithful women who have come to the tomb on the first day of the week at dawn. This is now the third day since these same women stood at the foot of Jesus' cross. They had witnessed his death that day. But Jesus' words echo and reinforce what the angel had already told these women. And the women go and do as they are told. Do you wish that you had been with those courageous women on that glorious morning all those years ago? Do you ever think about what it must have felt like to be there, to hear the risen Lord give these first words? Do you think that you would have received the good news, unbelievable as it seems, and run to share the news with everyone? Do you think that your faith is bold enough? I love how the gospel describes the feelings of the women that morning. They left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Fear and great joy, both at the same time. You know, how can you have joy and fear together? And yet, whatever mixture of feelings they have, they go and they run quickly and they tell others. When was the last time that you felt fear and great joy at the same time? (laughs) You knew you had the joy of a treasure that you wanted to share, and yet you were afraid to do it. But you knew it was the very thing God was calling you to do. Our message title is Sharing Our Treasures, but it's also our challenge on this Easter morning. We have been working our way through this preparatory season of Lent, building up to Easter, guided by this theme, Reflections on the Heart. We have dared to open our heart and to look at the reflections that we find there. We've asked questions of ourselves. What is our heart saying about our faith? And what do others see when they look at how we live our faith? The heart is where our values and priorities are sorted out. Jesus teaches us where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What do you treasure? What do I treasure? And what do we as a community of faith treasure together as we're striving to follow Jesus? And what do our lives reveal about what we treasure? Do we live in a way that tells others that we treasure God and our relationship with God above all else? Is Jesus our greatest treasure? I found this quote by A.W. Tozer, an American Christian pastor and author from the 20th century. He said, the man who has God for his treasure has all things in one. Today, we need to take time to pause before we can truly celebrate Easter with our whole hearts. Why 
is Easter, the defining event for people seeking to follow Jesus Christ. And why are we called Easter people? Well, in order to answer that question, we really have to go back a couple of days to Friday. It is by faith that we call this day Good Friday. It must not have felt like a good day to the women at the foot of Jesus' cross. In fact, it was probably their absolute worst day ever. All of their fears had come true right before their very eyes. Their hopes were crushed. Their love seemed futile. And they are grieving. And they must wait because of the Sabbath for the first day of the week. And then they are able to go to the tomb and to finish preparing Jesus' body for burial. They had to do this work for the one that they love more than anyone. And it is that first day of the week That changes everything. But only from the perspective of the empty grave does the cross of Jesus reveal its true power and value. And we know in the light of the resurrection that Jesus' cross is life-transforming. and It changes our lives. Jesus is revealed as our greatest treasure. Now they will see him again. And his word is proven true. His power is undefeated. And his life becomes a true sacrifice for our redemption. A quote from a more contemporary Christian pastor Timothy Keller explains the treasure of Jesus in this way. Every treasure on earth says, give your life to purchase me. Jesus says, I'm the one treasure who died to purchase you. Those are very interesting comments. We spend money to accumulate earthly treasures. We've been considering the meaning of treasures in our lives, and we've looked at the teaching of Jesus. Both in his teaching and in his life, Jesus draws this contrast between earthly treasures, things that we can purchase or earn, and then treasure that is really heavenly treasure, right? These are lasting treasures, not things that will fade with time. They will never lose their meaning. And so Jesus calls us to place our trust in heavenly treasures and to spend our efforts on storing up treasures in heaven. And of all these, Jesus Christ is the greatest treasure Of all. On our altar each week, we've had this treasure box, and this week the treasure box holds the lilies, a well known and loved symbol of Easter. The Easter lily has come to symbolize many aspects of Easter rebirth, new beginnings hope. They have a trumpet-like bloom so that they can herald the good news of Jesus Christ's resurrection. And they are called white-robed apostles of hope. I don't know if you've ever seen that phrase. I thought it's a beautiful description. Lilies are white-robed apostles of hope. 
Some of you have heard me talk about my family background. And you know that my maternal grandfather was a florist, part of the Fisher family. And my paternal grandfather was a farmer. So both of my parents were raised, and they had tremendous ability to nurture plants. Well, that ability hasn't stuck with me so far. But as I said earlier, I have great hopes in Cindy's workshop that I maybe, by the grace of God, will keep something, a plant, alive. But I think because of the way I was raised, I have a deep appreciation for the care that is necessary for plants to bloom and or to bear fruit. I'm so grateful that in the church we've found that we can use ever-living flowers, i.e. silk flowers, in place of the live ones, because I would no longer have a voice at this point if the sanctuary were filled with lilies. But however they're made, the lilies hold their significance and their symbolism. And we remember that the purpose of the lily is to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ's resurrection to new life. And Jesus invites us to experience with him this new life. And as we do, we can fulfill our calling to share the good news. Imagine Jesus saying to us right now, do not be afraid. Go and tell everyone throughout this community that they too can experience new life through my rising from death to life again. Go and tell even if there's fear mixed in with your faith, even if there's some doubt in your mind, and even when our faith does not understand completely, we are still called to go and tell. Jesus Christ calls us to share the good news that he is our greatest treasure. When was the last time that you were so full of joy that you had to share the news of a treasure in your life? I'm not sure why this particular story comes to my mind, but I was thinking of a time when our children were young. We had moved to Arbutus, and I was serving Arbutus Church, and we lived in the parsonage next door to the church. This happened not too long after we moved there, so I didn't know the people in the congregation very well. They didn't know a lot about me either. But I can still picture Matt, who had just turned five, running down that hill from the house to the church after the service was over on this particular Sunday. He was so excited. And he said to me, Mommy, we have something to tell you. We have to show you something. And I looked at him and I said, Did you get a dog? <laughs> and he said, No, Mommy but you better watch where you put your shoes from now on. So the little five-year-old kind of spilled the secret, right? Obviously, they had gotten a dog. So I wasn't particularly happy about this news myself for lots of reasons. Because I, um, I was not quite sure how we were going to handle a puppy. But I didn't want to show my honest reaction in front of church members who didn't know me very well. 
Um, but I also kind of got swept up with the great joy of my son. I was a little bit afraid and doubted whether we could really handle all that a puppy meant. And this was our black lab named Pepper. And it was because of Pepper that our next dog was called Grace. Because I used to say to Pepper, it's only by the grace of God that you're still in this house. <laughs> anyway, my point is that there was such joy in Matt's heart, and he just couldn't wait to tell me, even though his father said, whatever you do, don't tell your mother we have the puppy right now. <laughs> but he wanted to tell me, and he wanted to tell anyone who would listen. We should have this kind of joy and excitement about Jesus' resurrection, right? We know the good news of Jesus Christ's resurrection, and we know because the women who first heard the news shared as Jesus told them to do. Even though they were partially afraid, not quite understanding, they still had the joy that they wanted to share with everyone. They were faithful, and they were effective in telling the others. We worship today because we share the joy of the risen Christ as our greatest treasure. And we want to give witness to the power and the promise of new life. And that's why we celebrate together. But as I said earlier, Easter is not a one-day celebration. We have an entire season of 50 days. And so I just wanted to give you a little preview that our sermon series for the season of Easter is a celebration of the difference the resurrection of Jesus Christ makes not only in our world, but in our lives. And it's called New Life Begins Now. So my friends, we respond to the good news of Jesus' resurrection by sharing that good news with others. Our greatest treasure is the risen and living Savior. Go and tell